feed it, feed it. Oh yeah. Uh. Here we go. Okay. Gonna come to the surface. Whoa, Kobe, a big one. Woo! Oh yeah. Right, two of them right together. Oh, Crunchy and ass, get him. Bring him to you. Get, go to him. Go to him. Go to him. Go to him. Under it. Under it. Under it. What's up, Saltwater Fish University? Marcus here, and we're so stoked. Cobia season is finally here in Virginia. That's right, we're in Lewisetta, Virginia, right this moment. We're gonna leave from here, and we're gonna go to Smith Point Light, just at the mouth of the Potomac and the Chesapeake Bay. This would be considered Middle Bay, and we are going to chum for Cobia, because we don't have the luxury up here of just sight casting for them bad boys, the brown bomber. We love Cobia because they put up such an amazing fight. So in this video, we're gonna walk you through the entire process, what you need to catch a Cobia, because there's a lot of stuff you need. We're gonna show you how to set up your line. We're gonna show you hopefully how to catch one and how to reel it in. It's gonna be a great day. It's gonna be a great time. You're gonna be with us. We're gonna be making some magic together. And so let's cross our fingers that we get a brown bomber together right now. All right, so if we're gonna go Cobia fishing, we gotta remember to bring certain things, y'all. So, first thing we've got, we've got all of our rods. Now, I'm using mainly a, a 20, 30 pound class is what you see of rods and reels today. Nothing here real fancy. I mean, we'll show it to you out there, but I'm probably gonna be using four rods at a time, generally is what we put out. Now, there's some things you gotta remember when you go Cobia fishing. You gotta have, if you're not gonna sight cast, which again, we can't, we can't really do where we are. So we need to have chum. So chum's really important. So in one of these coolers, I have a bunch of blocks, like seven blocks of chum. I hope not to use them all. I'm hoping just to use two today because we hook up so fast. So that's the first thing you gotta remember. You gotta remember your chum. Now, we gotta have other things. If you're gonna catch a cobia, then things are crazy when you get them in the boat. Thus, we need something to uh, knock them fools out when they get in the boat. Now, why do we have this bad boy? Da -da! And this is a new scoop net. And what's it for? It's for the eels. But I tell you, if you forget this and you have eels, you are up a creek without a net. And so, if we're gonna catch a monster cobia, we need a monster bag because a lot of cobias in the bay are bigger than the fish wells that you're going to find in your typical bay boat. And this is a little bit bigger than a bay boat. But that being said, if you get a you know, 50 pound cobia, you ain't going to fit it in most storage areas. Not most. I mean, sure, there's boats where you can do it. This particular boat, and it's not going to fit in there, especially because we've got a uh, gyro stabilizer in what would be the main storage compartment. So with that being said, we got a fish bag. This will hold just about any cobia. If one can't fit in there, it's a great day, but you gotta have that because you wanna keep them clean. Of course, we gotta have, gotta have our eels. So, we've got a dozen eels. That's right, I don't hope, I'm hoping we don't use a dozen eels today. But we got the eels because cobia like nothing more than a, just a perfectly savory eel which sounds so disgusting but that's what love and that's that's what they love so we're gonna give it to them also you gotta have a big net not a small net a big net y'all if you don't have a big net to get these things in we got problems they don't allow us to gaff them anymore these copia which is really dumb because if you ever try netting a 60 pound cobia good luck not easy to do especially if you're fishing by yourself it's nearly impossible but hey we're gonna do our best because we're gonna be law-abiding citizens on this channel, so we cannot gaff them, even though it's obvious when they're of the right size, especially if they're in that 50-pound class. Okay, is there anything else? Oh yes, we need a basket to hold our chum. 
If you don't have a basket to hold your chum, you're not going to have any chum on the bottom because we want chum on the back, we want chum on the bottom, and so we're going to tie one from the top near the surface of the water and we're going to tie this one and it's going to go all the way down. That's why it's got a piece of concrete in it because it's going to sink to the bottom that way, okay? So we've got our chum, we've got our eel. Oh, one more thing. You better have a few of these bad boys. Why? Because if you don't have some dry rags and you try to put an eel on your hooks, you're going to lose your mind. I'm telling you, you're going to lose your mind. So make sure you have the rag. you got to have a rag. I've got multiple rags on the boat, dry rags, so that we never get so frustrated with the eels that we just want to lose our minds. All right, and then we got all of our other stuff. Oh yeah, and you got to make sure you got a special cobia license because you got to report every single catch. Anything else? I'm sure there's more, but I'm ready to fish. Let's get out of here. So we are here at Smith Point, and just a couple things real quick. There's a few boats around us, and when you cobia fish, you want to make sure that you, you don't anchor up next to another boat or in another boat's chum slick. That's the whole that's the whole etiquette process of this. You don't want to jump on top of their slick, and so you want to be a good distance away from them. Certainly not not within that line of slick that's running uh, with the tide or with the current. So just keep that in mind when you're going out. And so, you know, there's probably about 10 boats out here right now. And so I'm just going to stay, stay away from them and stay out of everybody's way. And just, just everybody's on the, on the, on the rim. I'm going to stay on the inside, and we're going to see if being different than everybody else works out for us. Okay, so we're on our spot. We're anchored up. First thing we're going to do is we're going to put some chum down to attract the fishies. So we got a. Uh, got a uh, seven pound block of chum here and I have definitely just used uh, ground up like I've got a chum grinder and you can use that too and in fact if you can get fresh ground up menhaden like fresh menhaden not frozen but freshly caught that's that's the best thing you can do but because I'm being a little bit um, just lazy today I'm using the the, uh, the blocks, okay? So I'm gonna take that straight down to the bottom and I'm gonna put a line with a uh, eel next to that. And that's gonna be my first, that's gonna be my first uh, line that goes down, okay? That's phase one. We also are gonna put a chum, a chum basket that goes uh, straight on, uh, that, that goes on the top of the surface. So we got one on the bottom, we got one on the top. So that's the next one that I'm gonna put out here. So we want that, remember, we want a slick on the bottom, we want a slick on the top. So we've got one in a bag here, another frozen block of chum. So I'm gonna tie this off so that it's essentially just hanging on the uh, surface of the of the water okay so now it's just going to create a slick at the top as well and so now we can have fun with our eels and paddle with those bad boys and get them out and hopefully catch some fish all right so most people are going to use uh they're going to use around an eight dot or nine dot hook it just depends on the individual the leader i have here is about five feet but some people go three feet uh, on your leader but I use 80 pound, you can use 60, lowest probably 40 pound on your leader. I'm using braid for the line, but really just, uh, you wanna, copia, you know, if you try to use a 20 pound leader, you're just gonna break it. I mean, if it's a good fish, you're just gonna break it. So you gotta make sure that you're, that you're hefty here, right? We're going for the big, we're going for the big bullets anyway. All right, Mr. Eel. So doing this by yourself, a little bit of a challenge. All right, so there's a couple different ways you can hook an eel. A lot of people go up into its jaw and out of its eyeball, which sounds pretty gross. Uh, 
poor guy. Uh, I tend to go through more through the tail. Um, but again, this is a matter of preference. So you notice I've got the towel all the way around it. Otherwise, it's just these guys, man, they just try to squeak out the whole time. So ideally, I just, as I'm doing this by myself, I just want to see the tail because that makes it so much easier. And then I can just put the hook right through, in this case, a couple a couple inches up and see, see what he's doing? He's just wiggling. That's what they do. So I'm gonna have to reset here because he's an eel. And eels are just crazy animals. Okay, so I've got this. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do when I take him out, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna set him in the water to calm him down because I don't want him to wrap all the way around the, around the hook. So I'm gonna take it from the towel just straight into the water. This way he just chills out a little bit, okay? So now I'm just gonna take this straight down to the bottom. And we're only in about 10 feet, 12, I'm sorry, 12 feet of water here. It's not, it's not a lot, not a lot of depth. Sandy soil. You want, you want your, your drag to, to, to be able to give a little bit. And this is the catch to, with cobia, when you're bottom fishing for them like this, chumming for them, oftentimes they need to, to you'll, you'll see the, the line go and you gotta be patient with it to let the cobia get it in its mouth, like let the cobia get the eel in its mouth and just swallow it, because otherwise you'll try to set the hook too early. So you let it run, run, run. You gotta be really patient and you're tightening. You're tightening it up and then bam, you set the hook, okay? And so uh, you'll notice that's what we're gonna do once uh, once we get there. So we're gonna let it we're gonna let it take some. We're gonna be patient, and then we're gonna tighten the bale and we're gonna set the hook. And uh, but a lot of people, you know, you'll see a lot of people lose cobia in the process of trying to set the hook. So if we hook up, remember we're going to let it go a little bit, tighten our bale. We're gonna set the hook. We're gonna be patient. We're gonna be smart. And then we're going to clear our lines and then we're going to have a good battle on our hands. All right? But we don't want to try to force the cobia in the boat because the cobia is green and it's just a little bit crazy. Okay? So, really hoping that we get a few on the boat. So we've been out two hours, nada, like nothing, not a sign of life. I actually got on the radio a couple minutes ago and said, is anybody else getting anything? And one person out of a group of like eight boats got one, or at least said they got one about an hour and a half ago. It wasn't even uh, legal size. So we're going to change positions. And what's interesting about Kobe, what I found is oftentimes if they're there, you know it within the first hour. At least if you're bottom fishing with chum and like we're doing out here usually within the first hour you know and so uh, we're gonna regroup we're gonna try another area we'll stay there for two hours and if we don't we're gonna go home and cry and this won't be turned into a video because nobody wants to see a video where no one catches fish had a bite we just had a bite it went started to take it and that's the thing with Kobe it didn't take it but that means they're here and now we're really excited and it took the one that was closest to the chum basket and so clearly 100% that was a Kobe I'm gonna reel this in slowly to see if our eel is still there and to see the Kobe is following. So he's still there. That's good. 
You don't stay there. Okay. So, I think we're gonna get hit. Cause that's how it works with Cobia. Knockdown got me excited, but didn't do enough. Teasing us. Whoa, whoa, beat him, beat him! I thought that was you. <laughs> Hooked up! Oh yeah! <laughs> oh yeah! We got that all on camera? Oh yeah! Ah. Here we go, okay, now, we're gonna have to uh, clear some lines. See? Okay, we'll, we'll just get the GoPro. Put that down, you we'll clear the line. It's gonna come to the surface. Whoa, Kobe, a big one! <laughs> Woo! All right, now get the net. Yep. Get the net. Net. Oh, it's coming up. Definitely keeper. Oh yeah! Alright, there's two of them right oh, together! My goodness. It's gonna come to you! Yeah, yeah. Uh, come to you now! Get it now, Vito! Get it now! <laughs> you gotta get under it. You got to get under it. I'm gonna bring him to you. I'm gonna bring him to you. Get, go to him! Go to him! Go to him! Go to him! Under it! Under it! Under it! No, no, stop! 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 You've got to go under the fish. Yeah! Vita! Yeah! yeah! Woo! Vita! Woo! Yeah! 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 Oh! Man, it's my first one! My first one! <laughs> oh, Vita! Oh, so oh my goodness! All right, get the camera, get the camera. <laughs> so, we had a hookup. Obviously, I don't know how much you saw because of the fact that I couldn't quite get our camera situated. It was crazy, there was two of us today. But now, once it's in the boat, see these spikes here on, on this on this cobia? These spikes? All right, those spikes will mess you up. And so you do not want to get hit by it. So when you bring a Kobe in, that's why it's actually good in this case that it's netted. And so now we gotta be careful. I'm gonna hit it. All right, just, you wanna be careful. What will happen sometimes, you hit it, you think it's knocked out and then all of a sudden it'll freak out again. So anyway, that's, we put it out. But we had a crazy hookup. Uh, it was had another Kobe right there with it. And uh, it paid that we moved spots here. And uh, that's why you saw that with the spinner reel, and this is, a, this is the uh, 6500 here, pin, spinner. I mean, did it a, did a great job. Everything held together really nice. We were using the braid line. And uh, we had on this the 80 pound mono. And so that's a big win. We're super happy. That means we're gonna grill some Kobe tonight and we're gonna make sure you are there with us to grill it up. And we're gonna keep keep it out just a few more minutes. Uh, we're gonna keep lines out for another 45 minutes just to see if we can catch our second one. Cause you can have uh, one per person, two per boat. And so uh, big win, happy. And uh, I think we should uh, measure it up. I'm gonna guess that it's probably around uh, 46, 47 inches. So we're gonna we're gonna see on that. It's time to measure this bad boy. Gotta be 40 inches in Virginia. And in this case, he is 44 and a half, 44 inches. Cha ching awesome 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 very happy and grateful for this fish such good eating and like i said we're going to grill it up together so you can't miss that part because we're going to marinate this show you how to do it right best grilled fish in the chesapeake bay right here all right quiet day but we got one bite and we made a count we're happy about that this is the first time vita the amazing cameraman the man behind the camera here at Saltwater Fish University. It's his first time netting 
one thing that you notice about the video is if you picked up, uh, if the audio comes through, because it was a little bit chaotic there for a second, audio comes through, you'll see that uh, what people tend to do when they're netting Kobe is they'll go over it. And so the key is to coming under it and getting it that way. And so third time was a charm. He snatched it. He did an awesome job. So super proud of him, stoked for him. And so now we're going to run back to Luisetta, fire up the grill, and let's have us some Kobe. Okay, so Kobe has been on ice. We're back at the dock here in Luisetta, Virginia. And uh, I don't have my uh, fillet station set up, so this is a little bit different than our normal situation. But we can fillet it nonetheless. Nothing uh, unusual, really, about a fillet a, a, a cobia. Just a lot like a rockfish, really. Just not, not much different there. So, we've now got two cubed bags of all white meat. We cut out all the additional red meat, because you know. And you probably used these before. These grill mates, unbelievable. So we're gonna make these up, and we're gonna put one in one, one in the other, and we're gonna let them marinate a little bit, and then we're gonna put them on the grill. I know, I'm not a chef. I'm not smart enough to do all this myself, but. Why reinvent the wheel if you ain't got to? You know what I'm saying? So we're gonna let these soak a little bit, put them on the grill, and we're gonna be golden. bit of Lowry's season salt. Not too much. Just enough to uh Okay, so hopefully you now have a great sense of how to catch cobia and uh, certainly how to uh, cook it, at least our way. I'm no chef, you knew that already. But it was good, my man thinks it was good. And this little man is gonna grow up on this channel, I have a good feeling, so I'd like to introduce you to Mana. Mana? He just wants more fish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All that good old Tongan blood and American blood mixed together, and he is just gonna be an amazing, amazing angler. So we can't wait to see him grow up on the channel. As always, we invite you to subscribe, share with your friends. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Until the next time, everyone, stay salty.
Y'all see that dude on that sailboat just now? That's what we gotta do with <laughs> these sailboaters. Number one, they go over your chum slick. Number two, he was asleep and it wasn't a joke. After he went by, he popped up and was like, oh my goodness, he, you could tell that he realized he was asleep. Missed us by 25 feet, bow of the boat, because he kept getting closer. <laughs> I mean, come on. What's up with this? <sighs> oh.